secondary storage. So first of all, how does it work? In a computer, we've got these states of zeros and ones, this binary. And how we store that is dependent on the storage medium we're using. So let's use a CD, for example. CD, when you buy them, um, have already been written to. But the idea is that there is a reflective surface, which we're going to colour in green here, and data pits. Okay, So basically, if you looked at a CD, there's parts of it that it starts off, everything's reflective. But when the laser's been burnt to it, some parts become dull. So then when the laser in your computer reads the surface of the CD, when it goes to the data pits, or it finds a bit that is non-reflective now, that's a different state to being reflective. So what what's basically happened on a CD is it's looking for reflective and non-reflective parts, and then they're mapped across to zeros and ones. Okay, so the CD starts off completely shiny, the laser burns it to it, which makes it dull in little parts, and as the CD spinning around, it sees zeros and ones, looking at dull and non-dull bits. Now, in a hard drive, that's a little bit different. In a magnetic hard drive, um, so a hard disk drive, not a solid state, it's stored based on magnets. Okay, Now, a magnet has got two sides to it, a north and a south. So what happens is, the zeros and ones in this case are basically whether it is charged with north or south. So a one could be north and a zero could be south. And as, basically as the magnet reads over it, it works out whether it's um, north or south charge, and then it gives you a zero or a one. And that's hence the reason why you shouldn't put magnets near a hard drive because it will change the polarity of where, you know the hard drive. So there's a, a drawing of magnet there. The south ones would be attracted to the south side, and read, and the na the north ones would go to the north. And then finally, you've got flash, which is basically stored on electrical charges. So common flash technology is solid-state hard drives or USB memory pens. They're, they're a good idea, a um, good example. So think of a USB pen as being full of little boxes that can hold an electric charge. You don't need to stress about how it gets in there, but basically, if one of those boxes is holding some sort of voltage, which is trapped in there, very, very low voltage, but it's trapped in that state, it's seen as, let's say, a 1, and if it's empty, it's seen as a 0. So electricity is called flash memory because it is flashed in there. It's an electrical charge. is forced in, in to, uh, to change the state of those boxes. So inside a hard drive, all the data is stored on the, the hard drive as a sector, and that head which looks like a little needle, moves up and down, on the read-write head moves up and down, looking for those sectors and can read it. So hard disks are commonly used as the secondary storage in PCs. Okay, now the sizes have got bigger as technologies have developed, but um, without a hard disk we're having a few issues, because that's where we store our secondary data, that's where your files go to when you're saving them, um, when they've been copied from memory. So portable hard disk drives are used as backups. Usually people can plug them in. Um, if you want to back up your computer, use them as storage. And they're long-lasting and reliable. Okay, Even though they've got a moving part to them, they are reliable and um, they're fairly cheap now. So SSDs, or solid-state disks, are slightly different. Now they haven't got any moving parts which makes them more robust. Unlike before, the uh, the hard disk drive, you saw the animation that the the head is moving across reading the states. In a solid state one, it's you know it's about electricity being stored, so there's no moving parts. And that means that they are faster to be able to access. So you can load files up faster. If you take a normal computer that's using a hard disk drive and you replace that with an SSD and the operating system is put on the SSD, it will boot faster. The computer will boot up faster. And the same technology is used in USB pens. 
So in the exam, they'll probably ask you to compare the difference or what's the benefit of using one over the other. Your hard disk drive um, are generally cheaper. They're, I mean, they're both a similar sort of capacity, but hard disk drives are still higher. Hard disk, drive, hard disk drives have a longer read-write life than SSDs. SSDs can only be written a certain number of times before they begin to deteriorate. So as long as you protect a, a hard disk drive, they can, they can go on forever, really. The advantage of an SSD, though, is they are faster, and they don't need defragmentating. And we looked at the other video about how when files get written on a, a hard disk drive, they get broken up, and then it's all over the place, and they need to be defragmented, put back in order so they can be read. That doesn't need to happen on SSD. And SSDs are more shockproof. Um, someone once told me that if you get a hard disk drive and you drop it on its side, it's the equivalent to a 4G, which is like Nemesis at Alton Towers. You don't want to be putting data through that. So if these are some pictures that you never ever want to lose, you want to keep them as safe as possible. So it depends on what your purpose is and what you're trying to do with it as to which to use. Ultimately, they're a similar sort of size. Hard disk drives are bigger, um, but solid states are faster. One of the questions you tend to get in the exam is name this type of storage. Um, so they might put a hard drive there. And if it's a normal hard drive, then obviously you'd go with magnetic. Um, if it's a solid state, as you go with flash. The best way to remember what type of storage a CD is, is a CD is a O shape for optical. Okay, Now, CDs, DVDs, and Blu-rays use a similar technology, but they are all slightly different. And it's based on how much they can store. So a CD can typically store about 700 megabytes. DVD can hold 4.7 gigabytes, and Blu-ray is about 25 gig. So Blu-ray can store a hell of a lot more than a CD can. Okay, now I showed you at the start like how that works, and you basically the laser is being shone and looking for data pits on the reflective surface. Um, there's some advantages of using CDs over hard drives. Um, they can't be damaged by water or shocks. If you throw a CD, it should still be the same. If you pour water on it, they should still be able to work. Their biggest problem is getting scratched. Uh, I'm sure you've got a CD that's got scratched. You play it in your CD player, and it will skip. Um, that's that's the main problem with them. You've got three types. Read only is means it can only be uh, only be read. So usually CD software or music you buy from a shop is read only. You don't want to you know, buy it and then write over it. You've got an album, you want to listen to it over and over again. It's read only. Write once are kind of like blank CDs that when they come, they've just got a, really, a very shiny surface. You burn them using your uh, computer. And you create the, the data pits. You create what the data is going to be like on that surface. And rewritable is the idea that it's got a special kind of ink in the CD or the DVD that um, can change its state from being shiny to dull. But CDs are declining now. No one really uses them that much anymore. New MacBooks don't even ship with a CD drive in them. Most people are going favouring of downloading um, software over the internet. Magnetic tapes, they're used primarily for backups. So the picture on the right is of a cassette. Now that's how we used to make mixtapes or music in the, uh, in the in the 90s. That's how people used to carry their music around before CDs were very popular. And the idea is that data is written sequentially. So you get the start and you keep writing or reading to it until you get to the end. And that makes it kind of hard to find because you've got to go through the whole tape to find what you want. Um, But yeah, so that makes it a slower way of finding data.